Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to episode 26 of Goodbye Bullshit, Hello Happiness. I'm your host, Atusa. And today I picked the topic of relationships and loving to love. And the reason was that this past few weeks, um, just with different clients, what's coming around me, uh, everything has been about relationships. So um, I thought it would be a good idea to have a Goodbye Bullshit, Hello Happiness episode on it. I like to start by quoting one of my favorite Rumi poems that was also in my chapter in the uh, book that got published. And that is, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. We have come in these physical bodies for the experience and to sort of elevate ourselves and evolve. And over the years, generations after generations, what's been passed down, we have managed to build these fortresses around ourselves and around our hearts that some can be a few feet of just brick, some it's a bunker with um, high security that nobody can cross. And all these barriers that we've managed to build over the years, and again, also passed down, just not in our lifetime we've built it, but it's been passed down from generation to generation out of fear. All those barriers are blocking the flow of love. And we get into these relationships and we wonder, well, you know, there isn't any love there, or the love is tainted by expectations and shoulds and have to. And the reason for all of that, the base of it is fear. Fear of not wanting to be alone. Fear of growing old and being alone fear of needing someone at some point to come and rescue you and help you, and that person is not there. And so in these relationships that we form, it's all about expectations, what you can do for me, what can you give me, and how to sort of even manipulate the situation like can you please stop doing this so i feel better so we want the other person to change themselves for us to feel better now that is what causes the relationships to be really heavy so again going back to what rumi is saying that if you want love in your life you, you got to clean your mirror. You got to break those walls and barriers as much as you can. Let go of them in order for you to allow that love to flow to you. Just imagine if all these walls and mazes are built and you're standing in the middle of it and there's a big sea of love coming to you in different directions it can't flow easily. It has to go through this maze that you've built to get to you. So that's the first task, is to sit with your fears, 
go inside, be still, and find all those barriers, walls, protections that you've built again around yourself to protect yourself because of different fears and anxieties that you have. And once you're able to let go of these walls, then the flow gets easier. Now, the other part of this is that you loving yourself and being kind to yourself and compassionate to yourself. Um, last time we talked about how that is not selfish to love yourself. So if you want, I'm not going to go over too much how to love yourself. I think I've done enough of um, episodes on how to love yourself. And that is one of the main things once you, as you're getting rid of these barriers, is to get into the place of loving yourself. And um, then once you love yourself and you're kind and compassionate to yourself, that can flow. Now, in order to do this, it takes awareness and acceptance, which means also taking responsibility, taking responsibility for your own shit in the relationships. Meaning that if I'm being triggered, whether it's from fear, sadness, lack of love, whatever that trigger is, that's on me. It's not on my partner or whoever's in my life to fix it for me. I may ask them to be present for me as I'm going through something so that I can, you know, see it better, help me see it better, but be present for me as I'm going through something. But even with that, they have a right to choose to be there or not be there depending on where they're at. However, I have to take responsibility for my stuff, for my triggers, for my own emotions, for my own behavior, for my own actions. Because as long as you're trying to put your stuff on someone else, then the other person if they're kind of person that they'll take it from you, at some point it's going to become heavy for them and they're going to resent you, they're going to be upset, they're going to be angry, they're going to be tired. And if it's a kind of person that usually does not take on stuff, more stuff than they have, then it becomes a fight that you're constantly trying to throw your stuff over the board and the other person's not taking it. So responsibility is a big part of a relationship for each of us. And this is not just for your part life partner, husband, wife, but also your kids and uh, kids' parents' relationship as well. We all have to be responsible for ourselves, for our behavior, for our actions, for our own emotions, and not wanting somebody else to come and fix it for us. Because the minute you ask them to fix it, then first of all, you've given your power away, you've given your voice away, and also the other person can get resentful and heavy. And in this responsibility that we're talking about, there's also choices and what you are choosing and wanting to experience. Again, everything is about your growth and the experiences that you want to have and practice opportunities for you. So, in every relationship, be mindful and get clear on what is it that you want from this relationship. What kind of experience you like to have? 
what are the things within yourself that you will like to practice letting go so you got to get clear on what is it that you want to experience what you're choosing how you want things to be regardless of don't put a name or an image or a picture for the person in the relationship but just if it's a life partner husband wife uh, parent kids anything it is first figure out your portion of what is it that you want to experience and from there when you have that clear image then as you're walking in there and you're taking responsibility for your stuff and you're letting go of your barriers and standing in your choices understanding that in each moment we all have choice and we are doing our best to choose what's best for us meaning there are times, you know, you're human. It's been a day that you've been running around, you're tired, and the last thing you need is somebody telling you something. And you might, at that moment, your instinct is to yell or do whatever. Now, if you're, you've gotten clear on what kind of relationship you want and what kind of experiences you want and what you're trying to let go and if you're trying to be more patient for example that situation is giving you the perfect opportunity to be more patient no matter what even if it's been a crazy day how can I practice being patient even with this so seeing each experience as it's happening that it's a gift for you to practice what you've been asking for in that relationship the kind of experiences you want not just you want to have but also the things that you want to let go and release so Again, if you're taking responsibility and you're going based on your choices now, yes, we might, again, since it's a practice opportunity, you know, just like anything else you practice, there's sometimes that really goes well and there are other times that, eh, I could have done that better. Be loving enough to ask for forgiveness either right there or an hour two hours the next day whenever it is be open to say i'm sorry forgive me i was trying to practice this and i didn't do a good job of staying patient and i lost my cool so forgiveness goes a long way for the energy to release in these relationships and not carry forward and the other part of this communication in these relationships, again, no matter if it's your partner, husband, wife, or it's a kid's parent relationship, even friends, speaking from your I place, speaking from your perspective, meaning you're saying, I see, I want, I need from my perspective, meaning that I can only, I always, you know, if you take in most objects, oops, sorry. Uh, if I tell you, like if I show this to anyone and I say, okay, you tell me what you see, they're gonna describe this face and I'm gonna describe what I'm seeing, which is totally something different than this. It might have something in common that it's a black box and it's got writing on it, but you have symbols on this side and mine says moon. Now, we're both right because everybody is coming from their perspective and we've gotten into a habit of thinking that in conversation, in communication, one has to be right and one has to be wrong. And that's just not 
true because both people are speaking from their perspective, from their experience and from their vantage point, and both are valid and true. And again, if you're coming from that loving place, from you are loving and accepting and acknowledging your stuff, and you're allowing the other person to do the same, then that communication becomes more at ease because there, there's more understanding in it. Now, if the partners or the people in the relationship, they're at the different levels energetically, sometimes that cannot happen immediately. But again, even in those conversations, all you can do is your best to speak from your place, from what you see, what you are seeking at that moment. And knowing that you might not get what you want, and that's going to be okay. That has to be okay for you. And allowing the other person to go through whatever it is that they're going through. Now, by no means... This means, you know, you got to stand there and if somebody's being abusive to you or mean to you, you got to take it and say, okay, you can for sure speak up for yourself and say, at this point, I'm, what I'm experiencing is that I feel that you're abusing me. Again, from your place of how you are seeing this person's words, this person's actions, and again, you have choice to walk away. And when the other person, their reactions to what you're saying, it's on them. You don't need to take it on. You don't need to convince them. And that's the other thing, again, when you're trying to make one person right or one person wrong in that communication, you're always trying to prove a point that you have to come and see it from my place and you have to agree with what I'm saying. No, they can still say that. they don't think they're being abusive. It doesn't matter if from your place that you're standing and what you're experiencing seeing is that the other person is being mean, abusive, whatever, and you've chosen to walk away, that's all that matters. And you can explain even your reasoning for walking away that this is what I'm experiencing at this point, and I'm choosing to walk away. I need a break. I want to step away. I need a longer term break. I want to walk away, whatever it is. Um, in that situation, you have to see what your choices and options are. But the key factor here is that, again, that you first understanding, be understanding of yourself your own triggers, um, and your own wishes and desires. Have a clear image of what you want or experience in a relationship. Release those barriers. Love yourself. Take responsibility for yourself. Understand that you always have choice and that you are choosing to the best of your capability in each moment. Um, and that one I want to explain as well, because sometimes people go back and say, well, if I could do this differently, yes, but you are not the person that you were two days ago, a month ago, especially if you're going through a healing journey, healing process, you are not the same person. So the person that was there a year ago made certain choices and decisions based on what felt good and right for them. The person you are today does that based on today's perspective. Um, so that's another key point to keep in mind. And um, keeping in mind that both people can be truths. Speak from your eye perspectives. Speak from your vantage point and allow the other one to be true as well. You don't have to be right and wrong in the conversations, allow it to be. Now, um, this also goes back now, the other point is rules. So we have 
built all these rules and regulations for what a relationship should be, what it needs to be, that there's an expectation that a person has to do something in the relationship. There is no should, have to, must, need to. Yes, there are, you communicate, you move, but, and there's a perspective that you are coming from a place of love. And if both parties are coming from a place of love, loving themselves and loving what's around them, then from that perspective, you naturally are there. You are naturally doing things without any expectations or needing anything in return. And you are more likely to help each other out. But the problems that happen is that we get into these situations that, first of all, we're not loving kind to ourselves and we have all these expectations from the other person. So it becomes a battle of why can't you do this to make me happier? Why aren't you giving this to me? Well, you owe it to me. That's the other big thing. You owe it in this relationship to be a certain way. Um, and that's not the case. Again, you always have choice and there isn't, you don't need to, as long as you are doing what feels good to you, as long as you're being loving and kind to yourself and extending that outward, extending that respect that you have for yourself outward, you are going to attract people that are of like energy and therefore there will be the same and you're going to help each other grow and expand and evolve as well. So part of these relationships that you have, um, again, no matter if it's a parent, child, if it's um, husband, wife, partner, it's all about helping each other clean and clear that mirror. Um, as Rumi said, the task is to break those barriers and bonds, everything you've put in there to block yourself from receiving love. And in those relationships, it's perfect opportunity to do those. And once you know and recognize yourself and you have a clear understanding of what you want to experience, then you can practice it in these relationships. That's the purpose of it. If I want to be have more patience, the life is going to give me more opportunities to practice it. It's not gonna. It's not a magic wand. Hey, here you go. You're more patient now. It's not gonna just come in a platter and give it to me here. <laughs> this is your patience. It's just through the experiences that are going to be coming to me that I get to practice being patient. If I want to be more understanding, same thing. I'm going to get into these different experiences through the different relationships to be able to see others' pers perspectives, where they're coming from, and have an understanding of sort of walking in their shoes and where they're coming from. But again, it all begins with you understanding yourself, understanding your triggers, understanding what you want to experience in each of these relationships and what are the things that you want to get better at and practice. And definitely a key, a key, must have key is taking responsibility. Don't make it others' uh, responsibility to do things for you, uh, to just make you feel better about yourself or about uh, what you're doing. Now, um, hi, Kimia. I see Kimia has been texting me, commenting on this. Um, I missed the earlier one. You said easier than done. So if you want to uh, hop on and let me know, I don't know if you're still on, but tell me. Uh, if you want me to explain something more, uh, I'll go ahead and do that as well. 
Um, yes, thumbs up. <laughs> so um, now, now that I've oh about forgiveness, forgiveness um, it is tough. Forgiveness. The reason a lot of times uh, forgiveness becomes hard is first of all we're not forgiving ourselves um, because. Uh, the hard part is that you admitting that you've done something wrong. So we never want to say, hey, my bad. And that's the part that, um, again, it goes back to, well, the other person has to be right, one right, one wrong. And um, yes, over, she said so much built up over the years. You got to stop it at some point, though. Right now, the reason, uh, part of the reason our environment, our world is where it is, is that each race, each person, each gender, um, each um, community has carried the baggage from generation to generation to generation over thousands and thousands and years and nobody wants to let it go nobody wants to say hey this is you know at some point we got to start from scratch and say okay i'm ready to let go and release the past and start new but everybody wants to keep carrying it forward same thing in the relationship we don't want to let go of the baggage once we let go of that baggage and say and again part of that is that we have a hard time forgiving ourselves for the things we've done the choices we've made or the choices we think we should have made um, and didn't do um i see your question you said how alone get help uh can you tell me a little bit more about that to, for me to understand what the question is? So, um, does it have to be a do, uh, or I just have to do my part only? It's uh, you, you always have to do your part. Um, you, we cannot force others. We cannot force them into change. We cannot force them to see or not see whatever they need to see, they're going to get to see and experience. And whatever you need to see and experience is for you. So as long as you get yourself into that place, again, that you're loving and kind to yourself, you're breaking your barriers, you're letting go of your triggers, you are taking responsibility and you're deciding what kind of experience you want to have and making choices that feels good to you and healing and moving, then as your energy shifts, the other people that are meant to be in your field, they have to match your energy level. And this energy level, yes, it can move like this, but it cannot be like this. If you're up here and somebody's down here, this is going to be a hard relationship to manage because either you got to dive down to meet them somewhere and for them they got to keep diving up so this is really hard so it has to be close that energy has to be close and that's why when somebody is not of your energy they will not be a part of your life it's for purpose and that's um one of the other things that I wanted to talk about in relationships, yes, our kids and everything, that's a little bit um, more of the kids are of your energy and you will move with them. However, other relationships, if they're not of your energy, friends, husband, wife, partner, whatever it is, if they are not of your energy, you will need to allow life to flow. You will need to allow the energy flow for what is for you is always for you and is coming to you and what's not for you is leaving you and that includes the relationships. 
those people, those friends, those communities, whatever is for you is always coming to you and matches your energy level. And whatever is not for you is leaving you. It's no longer a part of your reality, part of your experience, and therefore it's going to be leaving your energy field. Um, so I hope, um, Kimia John, that answered uh, some of the questions that you had. Um, one other one, it said, do I tackle it by myself, seek professional assistance? It's always up to you. Um, you can do these things by yourself, on your own. Um, you know, sometimes it's easier to get the help. Sometimes it's not. Uh, whatever. Again, it's a personal choice, personal preference. A lot of people, you know, like um, my son always is like, don't help me. I want to figure it out by myself. I'm going to go through it by myself. Um, and again, for someone, you know, as his mom, yes, sometimes it becomes difficult. But also that has been part of my um, triggers to let go that I uh, have learned to stay present for him and not have the need to fix it. Because then I had to look as like, why is the need to fix it? Yes, I wanted to make sure he's safe and everything. But at this point that I've given him tools and techniques, at some point you also got to let them evolve and grow as well. So I, my trust in him also is great to know that he has the tools that he needs and for me to just hold that space and be present as he's figuring it out and as he's shifting and maneuvering. Um, so um, didn't, I'll just also will touch on, I didn't get to talk about I love to love, um, but I want to touch on that a little bit as well. We're I'm past my 30 minute marker, but um, I love to love, I have a post on this on Instagram and I've said this, that I love to love, meaning um, when I was growing up, and I think that's true for um, our society, is that we've said it's okay to love things. It's okay to love animals, but when it comes to people, we get stingy with our love, meaning that you shouldn't say, I love you to everybody. I love you should be reserved for your family, for your close friends, and uh, for someone that you are in a relationship past a certain point. So, um, I, and I know, I remember even as a kid, I really, when I was really, really young, I, I did, I had that feeling that I just wanted to love. I, I wanted to tell people, I love you. But again, I was told that that's wrong because I need to save it for certain situations and certain people and I couldn't just tell everybody. Well, I'm here to tell you, say it to as many people as you want. Because again, once you get rid of those barriers and walls that we've built and allow that love to flow, you are going to receive that love back in so many different ways that right now your walls and those blocks are um, not allowing it to flow to you. So I love to love is that I tell people I love them. I have clients that walk in the first day, I love you. Um, guys that I'm not even in a relationship with and I don't, um, they're not even close friends that I have met through the work I'm doing and I can tell them I love you. And, um, it's just that it doesn't they're not taking it any other way other than I love you I can allow this love to flow it's not about um, anything else um, animals um, objects nature I love to love so 
try to break those walls down and get closer to that state of love where you just love being, love this existence, love this life, love those experiences that are coming to you and seeing them as a gift of love. And um, the more you do that, the more you'll see that those channels of love are going to open up and you're going to be receiving that love and magic from everywhere. Um, I like that as well, Kimia. Yes. I'm happy that I'm happy that you're loving to love. Uh, let's get more love out there to everybody. Um, start forgiving the past, let go of the past, forgive yourself, forgive others, ask for forgiveness, um, get clear on what kind of relationships you want and what kind of experiences you want to have. Uh, take responsibility for your own stuff. Speak from your I place, see your choices see what kind of experience you want and practice opportunities come your way. And so keep on practicing whatever it is that you want to experience and allow things to flow. And you are not there. Remind yourself, you're not there to fix it for others. And just because you're saying something from your perspective doesn't make you right or wrong. Both parties can be right, both parties can be wrong. We're just coming from our perspective into these relationships. And open your hands, allow life to flow because um, we gotta let room to, for these relationships to come, grow, move, expand. And just because somebody is leaving at the moment from your life doesn't mean that they're not gonna come back, that, um, it could be very possible for them to come back at a place that they're more energetical match to where you're at. So um, allow that flow. Uh, I felt like I jumped all, all over the place, covered a lot of things. Um, thank you for all of you guys that joined in. Thank you, Kimia John, as always, and for your love and support. Um, thank you guys, wishing you a wonderful week and um subscribe to the youtube channel the podcast share um with anybody that you think is gonna uh, benefit from these talks and i look forward to seeing you next week ah oh, yana thank you thank you beautiful i'm glad you joined in nice to see you here have a good week everybody love you all share the love Bye.